Cat Williams fascinates America and fascinates me. Let me explain to you why. I've been doing this for a long time. You, you may not know me, but I've been doing this a long time. This kind of a professional opinion thing. And I have been... What the hell is this? I got schmutz. I've got a schmutz on my, on my keppel. Anyway, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been in traditional terrestrial talk radio, syndicated talk radio. I was a part of the first um, online, uh, um, you know, internet radio before there was even broadband. I've done TV. I've done, I was one of the first podcasters ever. I've been doing this a long time. And I've seen people come and see people go. And I've been through the liberal and the conservative uh, aspects. And I've looked at social fascinations, everything from, from um, you know, um, Taylor Swift to the pet rock to whatever it is. And there's one thing that Americans in particular love more than anything else. And that's somebody who loves to destroy the status quo, who announces the emperor has no clothes. Somebody who stands up and says, you are a fake Years ago, and to this, to an extent now, there was a, uh, and is a, a, a movie reviewer named Rex Reed, who was famous for being biting, merciless, uh, tearing down uh, fads, saying this one can't sing, this one can't do this. We love this stuff. We love people who actually speak their mind. That's why we loved Christopher Hitchens. We love anybody who comes forward and says, no, 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 you don't understand this. And in America, by the way, in a country where there is absolutely no free speech to, to speak of, and don't ever let anyone kid you. This, by the way, my friends, is this is the Constitution of the United States. Mine is weathered and worn, and all of my voting stickers on the back I keep, this is what I keep, because this is our, this is, this is the testament that we, as an American, believe in. This is our hymnal as we stand before the sacred altar of free speech and expression, because that's the number one thing. And I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be an American, not the government. No, 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 no. But to be an American citizen, we, us, and the people that we've always respected are people who said they wanted to do something different. And when it comes to comedy, and this is important, the comic was the satirist. From Oscar Wilde to Mark Twain to Will Rogers to Lenny Bruce to Dick Gregory, who was so important, George Carlin, um, Bill Hicks. These are people who spoke to generations and found ways to get to the truth. And when somebody comes along like Cat Williams and says that there is, in essence, he calls it an Illuminati, an Illum easy for me to say, new teeth. He called it the Illuminati. Uh, I think uh, perhaps not necessarily in the Weishauptian Bavarian model, but nonetheless, what he speaks of is the fact that there is a kind of an overarching government, an overarching group of people who decide who is in and who is out. And what is important is when he comes along and says, this one can't read. This one has been subjected to uh, movies forcing men to, to, uh, to wear dresses. Let me explain something, what he is really getting at. And nobody wants to get it, especially in today's world, and especially those people who've made the Faustian bargain with the devil, who have said, those who have said, I will do whatever I have to do. Put me in, coach. Put me in, let me, let me go to the front of the line, and I will do whatever has to be done. I will do whatever has to be done to, to maintain this position, even though I'm a sellout. You can go to sellouts from the get-go, and a sellout and the appointed. Let me explain to you. Breitbart always said that politics is downstream from culture. If I'm going to run the world, if I'm going to run a particular culture, run it or destroy it, the first thing I want to do is I want to go and find out what is that people do in their uh, free time. How do they express themselves musically, artistically, in terms of cinema? And I want to put in my people in those positions. I want my my demons, my evil seeds, I want my disciples of Lucifer, whatever you want to call it, to be in the positions that they adore. Music, 
acting, art, movies. Remember years ago, all of a sudden there was Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist. Do you think that was by happenstance? Do you think that was, that just came about? Do you think there was something to be said? Do you think prior to that Jesus Christ superstar, remember God spell? Do you think these things just happened? Do you think all of a sudden uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber or Billy Friedkin says, hey, I've got an idea. I'm going to get with uh, Peter Blatty and we're going to just happen to come up with this idea where we look at the notion of the devil. Right now in our culture, more than ever, there is a transmogrification and erasure A destruction of the firewall between men and women. And there's something about the demarcation of gender that is not only natural and normal and healthy, but it is universal. It is a part of our existence. And when Cat Williams comes along and says, you know what, I'm noticing something here. Not only is there this preeminence of cross-dressing, but there seems to be the dissolution, the erasure of male versus female. Gender, the line of demarcation, the boundaries versus masculine, of masculine versus the distaff, the, the, uh, the feminine aspect of the moiety. These are important um, concepts. The, the moiety, the half, distaff, the female. And what it is, is when you have people who say, okay, we will make you a deal. You will be the number one headliner. You will be in all the movies. You will be in all this. But in order for you to do so, you must sign over your soul. And you must make sure that the particular type of humor, the particular type of thematic approaches that you that you deal with comport and comply with that which we have derived. Where does Oprah come from? Where does Tyler Perry come from? Where all of a sudden people just sort of come out of nowhere. How does that, how does that happen? And Steve Harvey, and lo and behold, here comes Cat Williams. And nobody has ever said, Cat, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong about this. You, you've, you've, you, you're in the wrong area. No. The problem why he is so dangerous is that he's correct. <laughs> he's correct. And not only that, on a simpler level, what he speaks about in terms of uh, the entertainment level or, or the comedy world or entertainment or whatever you want to call it, that goes for everything political, cultural, literary, film, because what is the most important aspect of the particular fishbowl that we live in is not government, it's not congressional districts, but what music you listen to, what social media platforms tell you what to do and tell you what is normal. And the last thing, the last thing that the, dare I say, the demonic Luciferian ghouls want is somebody like a Cat Williams coming along telling you that the emperor not only has no clothes, but that there's no emperor. Dear friend, thank you for letting me into your mind and in your heart and in your head. Please like what I'm saying. Please subscribe to the channel. And please, your thoughts and comments. Am I right? Am I right? What do you think is the reason or the reasons why Cat Williams so captivates so many people? Is it because of this braggadocious uh, uh, verve that he exhibits or because of this unremitting, inescapable truth and verity that he exudes? I think the latter. What say you? Comment as you see fit.